Hey everyone, in this third part, we are going to work on the camera movement. So we'll create this third person camera that we can use to look around with the mouse. We have the collision, which is a cool feature for a third person game. And as you can see, the player is moving to the direction where we are looking. And before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button. That helps me a lot. And let's jump right into it. So to implement a third person camera for our game, I'm going to use the Cinemachine package that allows you to create any kind of camera movement. To do that, we have to go to Window, then Package Manager, make sure that Unity Registry is selected, and search for Cinemachine. I've already installed this version, 2.8.9, using the Install button. And once you do that, you will be able to create a virtual camera. Under the hierarchy, let's right-click, Cinemachine, and we have Virtual Camera option. You notice that the camera moves to the same position of this object and that's because it's controlling our main camera so let's drag in our player holder to this follow parameter we can change some other settings like the field of view let's use 50 we have the follow offset vector we can change the offset between the player and our camera if you are making a third person shooter you need to change the x offset so that you can see the weapons for me i'm gonna use zero and let's hit play and there you go the camera is following our character for now i'm using the transpose option as the body let's try a third person follow and this will give you more options the same thing we have the offset we can adjust it as well as the camera distance so let's use 15 or maybe 12 i'm gonna move it a little bit to the top by changing the y offset for the x i'm gonna use zero because i want it to be in the middle I highly recommend you to play with these settings. And there you go, the camera is following the player. If I rotate the player to the right side using the D key, the camera is rotated to the same orientation. It seems like the camera is in the same position. Let me bring the scene view over here so that you can check. To solve this problem, I'm not going to use the player holder as the follow parameter. I will create an empty game object under our player using right click, create empty, and let's call it camera follow target. Then instead of using the player, I will drag in this object. Now we can easily reference this camera follow target and set its rotation so that we can rotate our camera accordingly. To implement that, I'm gonna go under the robot controller script and use serialize field, then transform, camera follow target. After that, I'm going to create a function to control the camera rotation using void camera rotation. We simply have to access the camera follow target dot rotation. For now, I will set it to a zero rotation using quaternion dot identity. I haven't called this function yet. You could add it under the update function, but I recommend you to use the late update. So it will add a little bit of a smoothness because it's called after the update function. And let's write the name, camera rotation. We have to select the player holder and reference the camera follow target. And let's hit play. And there you go, the camera is following the robot. And it doesn't affect the camera rotation because we are resetting the camera follow target rotation. Our next step is to take the inputs from the mouse. In our first video, we have added this controls input actions like the move action, which we have used to move our character. Now we'll use the look action. If you haven't watched that video, make sure to check it out. The same thing. Let's use the player manager input script and add a function on look, which takes in a variable of type input value. Let's call it value. So this function is called each time we move the mouse left and right or forward and backward. In such case, we will take uh, that variation, which is a vector2. Let's create another public variable, vector2. I'm gonna call it look. Under the onLook function, let's use look equals value, then dot, get vector2. Now we can take these inputs and use them under the robot controller. First, I will add two variables for the x and the y rotations using float, and let's call it x rotation and another float for the Y rotation. I've already created a variable for the player inputs manager that has the look vector. 
Now we can move under the camera rotation and we can use X rotation plus equals. Basically, we can add the Y value of the loop vector using input dot look dot Y. And we're going to rotate the camera around the Y axis so that we can look left and right using the mouse X variation using plus equals input dot look dot X. Finally, we can create a quaternion based on these values. I'm going to call it rotation equals quaternion dot error so that we can pass in the angles. For the X, I'm going to use the X rotation. For the Y, let's use the Y rotation. But for the Z, I'm going to pass in zero. And finally, we can assign this rotation to the target so that we can rotate the main camera. Let's save our script and let's hit play. Now we can rotate the camera and look around. To fix this problem, I'm going to clamp the value of the X rotation using X rotation equals. And let's use mathf.clamp, which takes the value that we want to clamp, which is the X rotation and the minimum and the maximum value. For example, I want it to be between minus 30 and 70 degrees. I recommend you to add two variables for these on top. Let's save the script again and check the result. The X rotation is limited to be between minus 30 degrees and 70 degrees. So if the camera hits the ground, we can't see it because we are not checking for collision between the camera and the ground. To fix that, we can select the virtual camera. Luckily, we have the option to check for the camera collision. For now, it's not checking for any objects. We can select our ground and assign a specific layer to it using add layer. I'm going to use ground. Then let's select it again and change its layer from default to ground. Last but not least, we can select the virtual camera and we need to tell it to check for collision between the camera and the objects that has the ground layer by selecting ground. If the camera hits the ground, you see that we have this kind of movement and that's what we want. And the final thing that we have to fix about this camera movement. For now, if I hit the Z axis to move forward, the player is still moving to the same direction, which is the forward vector. And that's because we have created the target direction using the move vector. We have to take into consideration the camera Y rotation. So let's rename this vector to be the input direction that is created using the move X and Y values. The same thing, I'm going to create a rotation based on this vector, input direction. But we're going to add the camera Y rotation to this value. Of course, we have to add a reference to width on top using serialize field. And let's declare it as a game object and call it main cam. But we can't add the Y rotation to a quaternion that has XY values. That's why I'm going to change this variable to be a float, which is the target rotation equals quaternion dot look rotation dot input direction. And to get the Y rotation, we use dot other angles dot Y. Then we can add the main camera Y rotation using main cam dot transform dot rotation. The same thing dot other angles dot Y. So we have this error because we have used the target rotation in the previous video as a quaternion so that we can change the player rotation. We can create it again using quaternion and call it rotation equals. Then let's add quaternion dot other for the X. I will use zero. Then I'm going to use the target rotation, which is a float and it's the Y rotation that we need. And finally, we can use this new quaternion to rotate our player. Now that we have the target rotation that we need and it is created using the inputs as well as the Y rotation of the camera, we need to get the direction based on this rotation. So let's create a vector three and call it target direction. And the expression is a little bit weird. Basically, we will take the vector three dot forward and to rotate it using the target rotation, we have to multiply it by the quaternion target rotation. And I think that's pretty much it. But we don't need to create the target rotation if we are not moving. So I will take this line of code and I'm going to set it to zero. Then I will assign the value under this if statement. That means when we are moving, 
we need to calculate the target rotation. First, make sure to reference the main camera object. And let's hit play. For now, we can rotate the camera so that we can look around. And let's try to move forward. The player is moving forward so fast. Because I have made a mistake, here we are multiplying the forward vector by a float, which is the target rotation. Actually, we have to set it to a quaternion so that we can rotate the vector dot euler and pass in 0 for the x, then the target rotation and 0 for the z. Let's save it again. And it doesn't work. The player starts moving without pressing the AWST keys. Don't worry, everything is fine. Actually, we have used this speed variable and it is initialized to 4 by default. I'm gonna rename this variable to be move speed. And I'm gonna add another float on top. I'm gonna call it speed. By default, it is 0. And once we start moving, I'm gonna change it to the move speed, which is 4. And there you go, we have finished this third person camera movement. Now we can look around with the mouse. And the player is moving to the direction where we are looking. I think that's pretty much it guys for this video. I hope you like it. In the next video we are going to add a special transformation. We will be able to turn this character into a ball. That's why don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified with my videos. And I will see you in the next one.